welcome everybody. How are you? I just wanted to welcome all of you uh, while we wait for the president and uh, the vice president who are finishing up uh, some business over in the west wing of the White House and to tell you how glad I am to see you and how pleased I am that we are not all freezing to death uh, while I have a chance to welcome you here. Uh, we're going to start the, the music again and I just wanted to have this chance just to visit with you informally until we actually get the, the formal part. Uh, uh, to take place, but I also wanted to thank uh, very much the United States Olympic Committee uh, for all of its hard work and its dedication to the ideals of the Olympics. And I also wanted to uh, thank them for arranging the visits to the schools this morning. How many of you went to schools this morning? Great, thank you so much. Well, I, re I really appreciate it, and I think a lot, of the, a lot of the kids and the teachers and the principal did too. So I'm just the warm-up to sort of get all of this off and going, and I think we're nearly, we're nearly getting ready for that, but I wanted to say a special word about the schools, because I think it's very important for other people to see you and to know that you're not just some figure on TV, but that your people had to really work hard to get where you are and that you're really dedicated to what you do, and that not everybody, as uh, we said today at the school, we were attending, you know, can win a gold or a silver or a bronze in an athletic event, but they can all win a medal in life if they just kind of keep it up and keep doing it and never give up. So I want to thank you all for that. Ladies and gentlemen, the President of the United States and the Vice President. Well, I've already welcomed you and uh, told you how glad we are to have you all here. And I also want now to introduce to you the Vice President of the United States, Al Gore. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much to the First Lady and the President and to uh, the distinguished guests who are present, uh, Senator Ben Nighthorse uh, Campbell, an, an Olympian, uh, Representative uh, 
John uh, McHugh, Atlanta Mayor uh, Bill Campbell, we're coming your way, Mayor, uh, and Billy Payne, President uh, and CEO of uh, the American uh, uh, Committee, and A.D. Uh, Frazier, the Chief Operating Officer, and from the uh, USOC, uh, Dr. Harvey Schiller, uh, Dr. Leroy Walker, Anita DeFrance, uh, and let me see, the delegation to uh, Littlehammer, Florence Griffith Joyner, uh, Tom McMillan, uh, and with the uh, Special Olympics, uh, Eunice Shriver, uh, and to the other distinguished guests who are present, and most of all to these uh, uh, Olympians and Paralympians, we are so proud of you. It's just uh, very difficult to express in words the feeling that our country has for what you are and what you have done and what you represent. And you know, the first uh, winter games to be held here in the United States, I'm told, were in Lake Placid in 1932, with then Governor of New York, Franklin Roosevelt, opening the games. The future First Lady, uh, Eleanor, went down the bobsled uh, course. <laughs> and um, I, we are all so proud of the way this First Lady represented our country in Lillehammer. Uh, she did an outstanding <laughs> job. I know that she got to meet uh, many of you and see you in action. She spoke to uh, Norwegians and uh, learned uh, some of the uh, local customs. She even got to talk to the mother of one of my good friends, uh, David Letterman. Uh, she is a, the First Lady is a courageous woman filled with energy. She is a fighter and may I say that we see it every single day as she fights for health care for every American and we're proud of that fight. But she didn't take a run down the bobsled uh, course because of her respect for human life, her, her own. <laughs> and uh, she went to Norway because the Olympics are such, uh, the Olympic Games are such a special event. They and the Paralympics are so special not only because they're held only once every uh, four years, but because they measure so many different kinds of excellence. In fact, you have to achieve so much to be in either games that we applaud not just those who win medals, but all of those who compete. Whether Olympian or Paralympian, all of you have won lots of competitions, but perhaps your greatest victories are the ones that you won over yourselves. After all, we know that for almost all of you, since you were seven, eight years old, or in some cases younger, you would wake up to practice at four or five in the morning, finishing your breakfast before your friend's uh, alarm clocks went off. I see some nods to that. You did odd jobs at ski resorts and ice rinks just to get extra time to practice. And you had to spend time away from home, away from friends, and away from family. Your success didn't always come quickly. Uh, in many cases, you've competed against each other for years. When you were 12, you won. When you were 14, maybe somebody else won. But what did you do when you came in second or third? You worked harder. You put more hours in. You strove to be the best. And that's why I think you were all such fantastic role models. You offer Americans, especially children, choices. You show them the joy of physical activity and teach them that with hard work, their dreams can come true. And for the Paralympians, all that is true and more. All of you who competed in the Paralympics overcame obstacles that would defeat most of us. In your pursuit of excellence, you show us not just what an athlete can accomplish, but the very potential of the human spirit. You can tell how much I uh, respect and admire your achievements, uh, I hope, and it's uh, why I'm happy to have a role in this uh, task force uh, helping uh, uh, Atlanta and helping organize our government's uh, assistance to Atlanta and to the Olympics uh, in 96. Uh, that means uh, federal, federal support, whether it's environmentally sound sewage systems, uh, the facilitation of housing and community development projects, the creation of a City of Atlanta communication system, or restoration work at historical sites, uh, we're prepared to help. Uh, in any event, uh, we are very, very proud of you and your perseverance. And it is now my pleasure to introduce a man who shares many of the same
qualities I've described here. He also per perseveres when the going gets tough. He also works extremely hard every day and tries his hardest to put America on top. The President of the United States, Bill Clinton. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Vice President. First Lady, to thank you for coming out here and, in this case, not warming up, but trying to cool down the crowd <laughs> while I was trying to get out of the Oval Office, to all of our distinguished guests, and especially to the Olympians. Uh, let me say, first of all, that the Olympics, for me, uh, like most Americans, is primarily a personal experience, not something I experience as president, but something I'm just another American cheering for our teams. I'm proud of the fact that we brought home more medals than any U.S. Winter Olympic team in history. I'm proud of the astonishing achievements of this Paralympic team and the fact that at least two of the athletes won four gold medals. Uh, I was elated and a little resentful, frankly, when my wife and daughter were able to go to Lillehammer and I couldn't. But you can bet your last nickel that all of us will be in Atlanta to our friends from Georgia there. We, uh, There's not much I can add to what the First Lady and the Vice President have said, except to first say how terribly impressed I was at the, uh, at the reports I got from Hillary and Chelsea about their contacts with the Olympians from the United States, about what kind of young people we sent over there and what kind of courage they had and the efforts that they made. It made, a, it, it made an incredible impression on me. And second, to tell you uh, what I said when I started, I, I've experienced the Olympics primarily as a citizen. I, I was, as a matter of fact, I may have endangered the national security because I stayed up every night until you went off the air. <laughs> I saw every last event. I saw every last interview. I heard the Star Spangled Banner played every time it was played. Uh, I did it uh, first when I was alone, and then when Hillary and Chelsea came back, we did it together. And I want to say, something very personal about it. Uh, what you did there, just by getting there, I hope with all my heart was communicated to the children that you visited when you went to the schools. And I thank you for that. And if I could ask you just for one thing, it would be to try to take some of your time. and I. I saw from the television portraits of some of you that a lot of you have done this already, but to try to take some of your time for as long as you can just to find some way to expose yourselves to the young people of this country. Because so many of them have so many troubles, they have so many difficulties, they have no one to cheer them on or spur them on or get them up at four o'clock in the morning the way some of you had to, to become what you wanted to be. And yet, by seeing you, they can imagine themselves in the light of your life. And I can tell you that, that I work hard up here every day, all of us do, trying to find ways to pull this country together and push this country forward and give our people the opportunities to live up to their God-given capacities. But in the end, this country is great because of what happens inside people's spirits and in families and in communities. And there are many of those young people whom you could reach better than I ever could. And because of what you have done, they will see that there are things that they could do. Because of what you became, there are things that they can become. I thank uh, my friends, Florence Griffiths Joyner and Tom McMillan for their leadership of our Council on uh, Athletics and Physical Fitness and all the others who have never forgotten the power of example in a positive way. But just never forget that. All of us as Americans are elated just the very thought that we could send people to the Olympic Games and what you had to do. You will probably never know, and most of you will probably never see the results of the people you may have influenced just by visiting these schools in the last day. But I plead with you to keep doing it because there are a lot of young people out there that we need for America's future. There are a lot of young people out there who'll be making decisions about their lives 
in the next couple of years who literally may be profoundly affected just by seeing you standing in their classrooms or walking their halls or having a simple conversation with them. You are the embodiment of what the rest of us try to create every day. I hope you'll never forget it and always give a little of it back to the next generation of young Americans. Thank you and God bless you all. President Clinton, I'm honored and excited to be here with you today. When Mrs. Clinton visited the Athletes Village in Lillehammer, we made her a member of the 1994 U.S. Olympic winter team and awarded her a team jacket. Although you couldn't be with us at the games, your support was certainly felt. Mrs. Clinton and Chelsea and your phone calls were an inspiration to all of us. You contributed to the 1994 Winter Games being the most successful ever for an American team. On behalf of the athletes of the 1994 United States Olympic winter team, it gives me great pleasure to present to you the honorary president of the United States Olympic Committee, this team jacket. It is emblematic of your membership on the team and is presented with pride and appreciation for your support. Luge team has a, a small token of our appreciation, which Gordy Shear will present to you. I don't know if I have the courage to get on this, but when I got this jacket, the vice president never won to pass up an opportunity to keep me humble, said they also have a lose suit for you. Nothing he says ever has one meaning. The other meaning was, think how much thinner you would look in it. <laughs> this is wonderful. Thank you very much. On behalf of the 1994 United States Paralympic winter team, I'd like to present you with these hats, which are part of our official uniform. First of all, I'm a little short. Hang on a minute. Thank you. First of all, I'd like to thank President Clinton for having us. I think all of us, I've been to three Olympic Games since this is the first time I've come to the White House. So um, it's a pleasure for me. And, and on behalf of all the athletes at, in Lillehammer, the Winter Olympic Games, Tommy Moe and I have a presentation to make right behind you. All the athletes have signed this T-shirt. And we'd love for you to, to take it as a token of our appreciation for your support, and we wish you could have been there. Thanks. Thank you. 